the year was 1982. Um, I had moved to the East Coast from St. Louis in 1979, and um, I went to the University of Bridgeport, Connecticut. I was in the jazz band there, and uh, through there I met some great musicians, and bass player Paul Adamy, Fred Vigdor was a sax player, and they had a band called Night Sprite. It was really a fun fusion band, Andy Block, guitar player, at the time Brendan O'Keefe was the keyboard player, and those, these guys were writing some really cool stuff. In 1981, I convinced Jay Oliver to move to uh, New York and join the band. Dan Walensky uh, took Fred's place, and Venice Thomas was the singer at the time. And we were very well rehearsed, and you know, I mean, we were a bunch of kids. We were playing pretty well. We were, we were, you know, doing a lot of gigs in Westchester, but we were trying to get gigs in Manhattan. And we were schlepping gear. I mean, man, I remember Jay and I. Used you know, hauling gear up and down staircases, and oh man, it was, I get tired thinking about those days, but, um, but we had a blast, and um, we got a gig at 7th Avenue South in the village in, in New York City, and very prestigious jazz club, you know, we got the gig, and at the time, Andy Block, guitarist, was studying with Steve Kahn, great guitarist in New York. And I was writing letters and sending cassettes and generally bugging the crap out of Peter Erskine at the time. And Peter and Steve were hanging out, so we invited them to the gig, you know. And uh, they showed up. remember like it was yesterday we were on fire the band was just great and uh, we had a good night and um, I don't know how it came about I don't remember but I but Peter recommended me from that gig he recommended me for a, a gig that he didn't want to do in town or couldn't do with the band called French Toast Peter Gordon's band at the time killer band Lou Soloff was playing a trumpet and Michelle Camillo was playing a, key, a piano and uh, Sammy Figueroa percussion and but most importantly for me, the one that I knew more than any of them was Anthony Jackson. He was playing bass, and I was just like, oh man, geez, to get a chance to play with Anthony, how cool is that? And uh, went and saw the band one time live with uh, Steve Ferroni playing. It was killing, and I was, I was so excited, I was so nervous, but, and I remember the rehearsal was like, you know, not too soon, not too uh, uh, far in the future after that gig that I saw, and I went. And they had given me charts, and you know, I recorded the gig, I think, and I was shedding it, and and I showed up to the rehearsal, and you know, there was new music, and Michelle had all this stuff that he was writing, you know, Caribbean stuff, and this was basically the precursor to the Michelle Camilla band. And uh, yeah, I didn't know what to play. There was all these rhythms, you know, that I wasn't hip to, and you know, Michelle's from Santo Domingo. He knows he's a percussionist first, and knew all the rhythms, and wrote a lot of stuff out for me, and. And I went home, you know, after the rehearsal, which went okay, you know, they knew I could play time, and it was, you know, on a crappy set of drums, and it was a rehearsal studio in New York. So um, I went home and shed the music for however long I had, a week, I don't remember what it was, and um, came to the gig. And I remember I, I showed up with my, my monitor speaker, my mixer, my mics, you know, everybody's looking at me like I was crazy, you know, and, and Anthony... Except Anthony, he wasn't looking at me like I was crazy, but he was wondering what was going on because, you know, he showed up with a Serwin Vega, you know, PA cabinet for his bass rig. <laughs> and I think he still does that. But um, anyway, we proceeded to I, have a great gig, you know. I was prepared. I, I had come with, you know, some, some new grooves and concepts of playing the music, and I had practiced my butt off to get this gig prepared. And um, it went great. It went great. Anthony was actually yelling and screaming. He was having so much fun. It was like a kid. It was really, really funny. And I was like, Anthony, chill, man. Um, but that moment for me was the, uh, the game-changing moment of my career because that gig and getting that gig took me from, um, you know, playing in, in 
in clubs and clubbing bands and doing weddings and those kind of things and really schlepping and struggling, you know, to, to graduating, if you will, into uh, this place playing with the professional musicians in town that I aspired to be like and play with. I was a kid still, but, you know, it was, uh, I was practicing a lot and I was ready for the gig. And luckily, it, they liked what I did enough to call me back and do it again. And Anthony was recommending me for everything in New York after that gig, um, including Simon and Garfunkel tour that happened. Um, and then I started doing a lot of other work and a lot of other things. And other game-changing moments happened in the future. Um, started to work with great musicians like the late, great Michael Brecker. And uh, he recommended me to this piano player guy named Chick Corea, who you might know. And, um, you know, that was the beginning of the electric band. So uh, it, um, you know, you always got to be ready. Uh, you never know when somebody's going to hear you. You never know when you're going to get your opportunity or shot at showing what you can do, um, supporting the music, playing the gig with something special that's yours, that's you. And um, so uh, practice hard and be ready, because I'm sure uh, if you do, your game-changing moment will happen as well.